From the Mac Center on the campus of Kent State University, ESPN presents Mid-American Conference College Basketball. And tonight, it's the Buffalo Bulls coming to town to take on the Golden Flashes of Kent State. And a pleasant good evening, everyone. Welcome in. Brock Bowling, Rob Kennedy with you. And breaking news before the game for Kent State, Danny Pippen out for tonight due to back spasms. He will have to sit this one out. So this is a big game for these two teams tonight as we take a look at the MAC standings. The top four seeds receive a bye to the MAC tournament in two weeks. Right now, Buffalo, the four seed, if the tournament started today, and Kent State is the sixth seed. And Rob, Kent State, if it wants to win tonight, has to do it without. Danny Pippen. Yeah, their leading scorer and rebounder. They're going to obviously miss him on the offense and, and going to miss him on the defensive end as well. Played terrific in the first game when they were able to win up at Buffalo. Somebody else going to have to step up on both sides. But for Buffalo, luckily, they've got their leading scorer, Javon Graves, who has stepped it up here in his junior year, averaging a little over seven more points per game than he did last year when he was a key component to this Buffalo team that made a run to the round of 32 in the NCAA tournament. Buffalo in blue, Kent State in the home white. Opening tap, and here we go. The golden flashes of Kent State with the opening possession of the game. 17 and nine record so far, seven and six in the MAC, fourth place in the East. Coming off a 70 to 49 loss on Tuesday at Eastern Michigan, the golden flashes just had trouble Scoring points, making baskets, made only 16 shots the entire game, shot 29%. Yeah, if you can't make shots against the Eastern Michigan zone, you've got no chance. And Whittington, little jump hook with the right hand over that left shoulder, scores the game's first two. And the Buffalo Bulls, who should we look out for here tonight? Well, certainly not only Graves, but the senior leadership of Devonta Jordan in the backcourt, one of the keys for this team. Graves, left side, it goes to Jordan for three, and down it goes for Devontae Jordan, the 6'2 junior from Cocoa, Florida. Right on cue. Not often you get it <laughs> to fall in place like that. Perfectly set up, my friend. And the starting five for Kent State, as it's going to be Turvel Beck in the lineup, starting for the injured Danny Pippen, as they go inside of Whittington again. In the hands of Simons, he's been fighting pink guy all week, got cleared to play. Here today and playing tonight, Whittington again. This time it's off the mark and a rebound by the Bulls. And that's where they're going to have to get scoring from Whittington, especially with Pippen out. Floater missed by Graves, rebound by Kent State. Kent State, a team that has lost three of its last four, trying to get back to the winning ways tonight as Simons launches a three. And the rebound skied for by Jonathan Williams for the Buffalo Bulls. The Bulls want to get out and run, whether or not it's from creating turnovers with pressure defense or rebounding and running. It's one of the best rebounding teams in the country. Williams, series of moves, goes left hand and scores. And he has really stepped up his game. He's a guy, he's a lefty who always goes to his left side. The scouting report is to make sure you stay on that right shoulder. They did it. Roberts looking inside, and Stez goes to the left side to Simons. Shot clock inside of 10, good pesky defense by the Buffalo Bulls in a half court set. Inside, back for the point, play in. Now good pace, it's in a nice look there from Roberts. He's got good size as a wing player when he gets into the lane, can see over top. The Buffalo Bulls, 17 and nine record, eight and five in the MAC, third place in the Eastern Division. Buffalo lost at home to Kent State back on January 24th in the first meeting of the year. A deep three by Johnson. That's way off the mark. Too strong. Out of bounds to Kent State. There is Rob Sinderoff, the head coach for Kent State in his ninth season. He's never had a losing season here at Kent State. Yeah, the all-time winningest coach here at Kent State and took the Golden Flashes to the NCAA tournament back in 2017. Inside pass, Beck, Simons, working on Johnson, and the turnaround shot goes for Simons. Well, Simons is a terrific shooter, may have passed up an easier shot, passing up the initial three, able to hit the step back. Another lead change, and Kent State back in the lead by one. Jordan stopped. 
Jordan wide open for the three. Now Jordan knocking down two threes, and that's important for Buffalo. He came in struggling from deep, just two of 13 from three in the last two games, and just four of 22 over the last four. Roberts off the mark on that three, and the rebound run down by Jordan for the Bulls. He wants to push inside all the way, scores! Well, that's what they do. They call it running of the Bulls. <laughs> One of the reasons why they've been so good the last couple of years under Nate Oates. They played fast. Jim Whitesell in his first season was a big part of the Buffalo program over the last four years. So they continue to play fast. And Simons sneaks inside the defense and scores an easy two. His second basket is fourth point of the game. Back and forth we go. We think we're going to see some points put up on the board tonight. Each team averaging in the mid to high 70s in scoring this year. Ball loose, fought for, picked up by the Golden Flashes. First turnover on the Buffalo Bulls. Here's Williams. Acrobatic shot, count the basket and one. Antonio Williams scores the basket. They'll go to the line for a free throw. When we come back, timeout on the floor, 15, 17 to go in the opening half. Back and forth battle, tied at 10. Antonio Williams with the acrobatic shot and the foul for the Golden Flashes. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Burger King. The five for four dollar meal is here only at Burger King. And USAA, proud supporter of the military community. What you're made of, we're made for. And welcome back everyone. Brock Bowling and Rob Kennedy with you. And Rob, so far a lot of back and forth action, some lead changes here and there, and uh, both teams getting up and down the floor. Your thoughts on the first few minutes? Well, it's the pace we thought we'd see. Both teams shooting the ball well. Only five missed shots in that first media sequence. So both teams off to a good start and a critical game tonight because these two teams are fighting for that top four seed to get a bye in the MAC tournament in two weeks. And of course, like we said in the open, Kent State has to do it tonight without Danny Pippen. Yeah, and by this time of the year, you're in one of two boats as a team. You either are packing it in and the season's over or you're fighting for a chance to win your conference tournament, get to the NCAA tournament. Both of these teams feel like they can be the MAC representative in the NCAAs for good reason. Buffalo, you look at their five league losses, four of those by a combined 10 points, including a close one. First time these two teams met against Kent State. And Kent State, they've been a little bit of a Jekyll and Hyde, but when they've been good, they've been real good. They've beaten the two best teams in the MAC already this year in Akron and Bowling Green. And they've also beaten Buffalo, who sits as the four seed. And Williams cannot convert on the three-point opportunity. Ball out of bounds, and it goes back over to the Buffalo Bills. There's Antonio Williams. He scored the last basket before the timeout. And Coach Cinderoff told us before the game that as he goes, the team goes, and they got to keep him out of foul trouble because he's so valuable leading this team on the floor. Well, he can be really aggressive on the defensive end, sometimes to the detriment of his team because he picks up some silly fouls. Jordan on the drive, kicks it over to Sagu, who's in the game. Here's Graves, short three, and the rebound controlled by Simons for Kent State. And that's a key all game long for Kent State to keep Buffalo off the offensive boards. Second in the country behind West Virginia at 15 offensive boards a game. Whistle inside, foul. Down low, away from the basketball, and it's on the Buffalo Bulls. The head coach for Buffalo is Jim Whitesell. No stranger to the Buffalo Bills program. Spent the last four seasons as the associate head coach, over 400 wins in his collegiate career, and now in his first season as the top guy, as the head coach for the Buffalo Bulls basketball program. Roberts, tough shot, puts it in. Oh, you're right, it was a tough shot. Defender hanging all over him, but able to hit the jumper from the foul line. Buffalo with the ball, up, down by two. Kent State beat Buffalo back on January 24th by a score of 70 to 66. And we talked to Coach Whitesell before the game, asked him about that last game last month, and he said his team lost the game on the 50-50 balls, didn't win that battle late in the second half. 
and they had 18 turnovers in that game. Too many extra opportunities for Kent State, but that game was tied with 45 seconds left before Pippen was able to make six consecutive foul shots to secure the win. Kent State currently on a 6-0 run. This is a team that's hard to beat in this building this year. 11-2 in the Max Center this season. Shot clock inside of 10, traveling on Roberts. Turnover, first of the game for Kent State, and we go back the other way. Rob Sinderoff. His team has lost three of its last four, and he says his team just needs to get back to basics. He's trying to sometimes overextend itself on defense, wants to get back to the basics on D and try and break the losing skid here tonight as the three goes down by Gabe Grant. Rolls it in there, his first wins of the day. And Grant at just 25% on the season for deep, so he's not a guy you're going to worry about running off the line. Williams needs help. Finds Williamson, shot clock inside of 10. Roberts with five on the drive, goes up, and a slam by Williams! But great patience by Roberts when he got deep into the lane. Second time he's found a wide open teammate with the shot clock winding down. Another lead change, and Kim State back in front by one. Grant short of the three, and Williams runs down, but he's for a rebound for Kent State. Golden flashes, want to run inside Weddington, lays it in. And again, Roberts is controlling the game on the offensive end for the Golden Flashes, not by scoring, but by finding easy opportunities for his teammates. Up and down, back and forth we go here at the Max Center. Ball deflected. Impala against Whittington. That's a good matchup, and that shot is way over everything. Control to the miss by Kent State. And Roberts. The way to wall up defensively. Just hold your ground. Roberts backs in on Sagu and an offensive foul on Roberts. Sagu takes the charge and they go back the other way. And Roberts had him in good position, but you know guys are going to sit and try and flop when you get contact as you're trying to back them in. So Buffalo ball, down three, as we've played eight minutes here in the opening half of play. Here's Jordan against Roberts, finds Grant. They swing it to the left side, Sagu, short on that three. Fight for the rebound and cleared by Williamson. And you'll say that a lot tonight, Brock. Fighting for the rebound, both these teams compete on the glass at both ends. And a timeout of the floor, under 12, media timeout as the Golden Flashes lead it by three. The alley-oop from Roberts to Williams for the jam. Golden Flashes at home, up three on ESPN. That'll be a nice one tomorrow night on ABC. The NBA, Joel Embiid of the Sixers, Giannis Antetokounmpo for the Bucks, and this is going to be a good one tomorrow night. Yeah, and Embiid last night after they beat the Nets in overtime without Kyrie, said he was the best player in the world. I don't know about that. <laughs> I, I, I think the Greek freak might have something to say about that. 30 a game, right now the leading candidate for the MVP in the league. One thing about Embiid, he doesn't lack confidence, though. <laughs> well, maybe the uh, debate will be decided tomorrow night on the floor. Now, there's no debate about that. Maybe in his mind there is, but yeah. stop nobody else's. Stop talking about it. Just go out and uh, let your game do the talking on the floor tomorrow night. C.J. Williamson the line makes the first free throw. Excellent free throw shooter on the year. He is one for two. Or his team is one for two on the night. He's one for one on this trip, 89% of the season. Played in 33 games last year. Average six points, three rebounds per game. This year, Williamson averaging five points, four boards, makes both free throws. He has his only two points of the game at the line. And it's Kent State in the lead by five. And for Buffalo, 
And the last seven possessions, six empty trips for the Bulls. Sagu, tough fadeaway. Fight for the rebound, picked up by Grant. Puts it in. But as we said, that's what they do. Sometimes their best offense is a missed shot. They get after the offensive boards with a vengeance. In state by three, Roberts on the drive, collision, no call, they play on. And the loose ball taken by Sugu for the Bulls. He finds Johnson. Graves. And the rebound by Roberts for Kent State. It's a Kent State team that averages 75 points a game. The Bulls average 78. Williams rises and drops in a two. And Williams has gotten off to a good start here. You mentioned Brock, he's a key factor for them. When he plays well, they win ball games. Grant takes the three, drives inside, contact, no. Fight for the rebound, Bertram in there, shot partially blocked. And it's taken by Roberts for Kent State. Roberts pulls up. And the loose ball rebound taken by Johnson for the Bulls who want to run. Ball knocked away by Williams, runs it down. Can he beat his hand on the floor? Lays it up, no, but he's fouled. He'll go to the line to shoot two. Well, Rob Senderoff talked about how good of an off-ball defender Antonio Williams is. This time it's his on-the-ball defense, but it, it's those hands and passing lanes coming up with an opportunity in the open floor. They won the battle of turnovers in the first game. It's one of the reasons why they won that battle up in Buffalo. Antonio Williams averaging 13 points a game, 64% free throw shooter. Knocks that one down. He has seven. Williams had four points in the game at Buffalo in the win on January 24th. He had five points in his last game on Tuesday in the loss at Eastern Michigan. And in that first meeting, he wasn't able to stay on the floor for extended minutes. Just played 14 minutes because he was saddled with foul trouble. One for two on that trip. Kent State by six. Inside of 10 minutes to go here in the first half of play. Johnson somehow muscles it in. Yeah, good defense at the rim. Good rim protection by Whittington. It's a Kent State team that struggled to score points on Tuesday at Eastern Michigan. Shot 29% for the game, 5 of 31 on threes. The fake and the shot by Williams and loose ball foul called on the Buffalo Bulls. Talk about attacking the rim. Johnson goes right at it. That is great post defense. That's the way you protect the rim. But a better job by Johnson to fight through. A little bit of contact. Ends up on his back, but the ball ends up going through the net. Fouls on Devontae Jordan is first. A shot for three. Curse in the left corner by Simons. Oh, well, he said he's a terrific shooter, especially with range. 40% on the season from beyond the three. Fifth best in the map. Johnson stops and he travels. Turnover number four on the Buffalo Bulls. How about this three by Troy Simons? He tried to draw the contact, almost had a four-point possibility, knocks in the deep three. Well, nice job off the baseline, out of bounds, just enough of a rub off on the screen to give Simons a little bit of space. And you can see, Brock, he's a guy that doesn't need a whole lot of space to get that three off. Kent State by seven, it's its biggest lead of the game. Williamson, the fadeaway goes in. Well, I've hit a couple of tough fadeaway shots. Off to a good start offensively after not being able to throw it in the ocean in their last game. That's his first basket of the game, his fourth point overall of the night. Golden flashes by nine. Braves, the floater. No, put back by Mbala. Yeah, your initial defense, that, that, that's only part of the story against Buffalo. You got to finish defensive possessions by blocking out. Oh, oh, oh. 
Here's Simons, hit a deep corner three moments ago. Now it's Roberts pushing off and an offensive foul on Roberts. Shoved off the defender. That's his second and a timeout of the floor. 7.58 to go in the first half. Kent State at home leads by seven. Tomorrow at noon Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app, number one, Baylor hosts number three, Kansas at the Farrell Center in a sonic blockbuster. This one could decide the Big 12 title and number one overall seed in the NCAA tournament. Kansas Baylor tomorrow, noon Eastern on ESPN and on the ESPN app. Baylor won over Kansas in Lawrence in January. First time Baylor has ever won at Kansas. Kansas did not have Devon Dodson for the majority of that game out with a hip injury that he sustained that day. Kansas has won 13 of the last 15. Baylor's won 23 in a row. Kansas 11 straight. An easy basket so far tonight. Rob for Kent State. Well, they've done a good job executing late in the shot clock and a couple of good feeds over top by their guards, especially Roberts using his size to find teammates. They're shooting it at 64%, and you can see why. They've had a couple easy ones right at the rim. Kent State's biggest lead was nine. It's down to seven now. Kent State on a 20 to nine run in the last eight minutes. And Kent State playing good defense without fouling. Only two team fouls so far through the first 12 minutes of the game. And yeah, no trips to the line for the Bulls. Shot for three, missed by Galleon, and a rebound by Kent State and Troy Simons. Williams on the drive, hangs in the air, finds Peterson is in the game for the first time, and out of bounds was Williams, turnover number four on Kent State. Yeah, he stepped out of bounds and then was the first person to touch when he came back in. So here come the Buffalo Bulls up the floor. Here's a look at the game summary. Field goals, Kent State shooting in the mid-60s from the field. Devontae Jordan has eight points for the Bulls. Inside is Impala. He travels. Turnover number five of the game on Buffalo. And that's one of the things he's got to work on. He's got great size, rebounds, block shots, but his footwork and his ability to finish on those dribble penetration and catches will give him an opportunity to make that next step up next year. Williams on the way, two-hand slam! Oh, his teammates may want to help with a little rotation defensively. That's just way too easy. I mean, he blew by everybody and got an easy two-hand jam. Shot for three, goes in in the corner for Buffalo by Graves. Well, when they need baskets, that's the guy that they can ride. Yeah. Kent State beat Buffalo in Buffalo, New York in January, trying to get the season sweep here on its home floor. And right now, Kent State leads by six with 6.27 to go. But Williams with the nice hesitation, but then no help side defense for Buffalo. They've been guarding much better over the last three games. And we talked to Jim Weitzel earlier today at shoot around. He said it's our help side defense. What help side defense? Nothing there. And, and again, said, yeah, again, Kent State without Danny Pippen tonight out with back spasms, and Kent State really hasn't missed a beat without him. Hand check foul on Brock Bertram for Buffalo. That's his first. There's Danny Pippen, averaging 13 points a game, had a double-double at Eastern Michigan on Tuesday in the team's loss. He had 15 points and 10 rebounds, and he's out of the game tonight due to the back spasms. And you would think without him in the game, Brock, that they would suffer scoring a basketball at the rim. It hasn't been the case. They've got 16 points in the paint already, mostly because they've driven the basketball. Whittington missing from the perimeter. Fight for the rebound. Saved somehow by Peterson. Out to Williams. Open three. Missing. Rebound fought for. It's out of bounds. And it stays with Kent State. How about the save by Peterson diving out of bounds? Yeah, good hustle all the way around. Kent State getting a couple extra opportunities on the offensive glass. Williamson, quick release. Three, it goes in, and he's fouled. Ahead of the line for a four-point opportunity. 
Well, that's the same baseline out of bounds play that we saw Simons hit a three on earlier. They just reversed it. Instead of running it to the left corner, here it is to the right corner. Credit the nice screen by the big guy Whittington. Second time, he just got enough of contact. See, he comes off the screen and then comes back. A little misdirection. As you said, foot on the line. So it's a two, but he's got an opportunity to make it a three. Yeah, from here, it looked like a three in the corner. Instead, an obvious two on replay. So going up for the three-point opportunity, the three-point play, C.J. Williamson. And that was a great look by our camera people there. Any of those misdirections, right? You're coming, you're fighting so hard to get over the first screen. When you stop and go back and use it the other direction, it's really hard for a defender, if you don't switch that play, to fight through that screen twice. A uh, rare miss by Williamson. He shoots 89% of the year. Kent State matching its biggest lead of nine, 31-22 inside six minutes to go here in the first half. Galleon hangs in the air, offensive foul. And they call it on Galleon, pushed off on the defender. That's his first, and we go back the other way. Savion Galleon, 6'4", freshman from Washington, D.C. He's had limited playing time this year. Getting in on the action here tonight in the first half for Jim Whitesell's club. There's an illegal screen set by Kalen Bennett for Kent State. And they go back the other way. Well, Bennett's so big, he doesn't have to get his arms up. It's hard to get around the big guy. See, he got there just a little late. Doesn't establish his feet. What a great story he is, the 6'11 freshman. The only player in college basketball who's an autistic and doing a great job here. He's got so much support from the academic side of things here at Kent State. And they're really high on him because of his size. Williamson, Simons, open three. It's short. Rebound. And Burke had it blocked. Cleanly. Loose ball diving in the floor. People diving all over the place. And a loose ball foul called on the Buffalo, on the uh, Kent State. And he goes back over to Buffalo. Back. And that's his first. Well, you got to like the effort for both teams. A little sloppy at times. Everybody going to the floor. Not once, but twice. <laughs> Beck got, yeah, Beck got there just a little bit late, so he picks up the foul. There's uh, Brock Bertram. There's two Brocks in the building tonight. I'm not used to there this. There you go. <laughs> They're back on the floor after missing the first 13 games of the season with a foot injury. Kent State by eight. Johnson, tough fadeaway three. And the rebound by Simons for Kent State. Got to be able to find a better look than that. Williams on the attack, tough shot, goes in. And yeah, he's been aggressive on the offensive game all game long. Antonio Williams with a tough driving layup puts Kent State up by 10. Rob, how about the play of Antonio Williams going inside and up in the air, throwing it down as well? Well, certainly he's got good upper body strength for a guard, and he's using it, throwing guys off of him defensively. Five of seven from the floor. He's in double figures. Showing you right there his strength with a little flex. First double-digit lead of the game so far for Kent. Johnson spinning, fouled. He will head to the line for two shots. That was on Simons, and that's his first. So going to the line, Antoine Johnson, 6'2", senior. He had 12 points in his last game on Tuesday against Ball State. 79% free throw shooter. And this is the first trip to the line for Buffalo tonight, and Johnson comes up short. Shot number two coming up. And Rob Senderoff thought that was one of the keys in their win up at Buffalo when they kept them off the line. Bulls just four of nine from the foul line. Kent State in that game was eight for eight, so not a whole lot of foul shots in that first meeting. 
Rob Senderoff's team needed a couple of free throws late as Pippen hit six straight to close it out. Williams on the attack, feeds it inside to Whittington. He traveled turnover number five of the game on Kent State. Correction, number six. So it's Kent State by nine. Here comes Buffalo. This is a Buffalo Bulls program last year, 32-4, and 16-2 and in the MAC. That 32-4 and record, the best record in school history. Yeah, MAC record as well with the 32 wins. And they were a team that certainly could have gotten to the second weekend. Only problem is they ran into Texas <laughs> Tech in a round of 32. I mean, they were a sweet 16 game team. Grant well short on the three. Offensive rebound by Jordan. Shot clock recess to 20. Jordan, hand check foul, called on Williamson. And that's his first. And Rob, who Williamson has dominated for Kent State here tonight. Now oh, the little guard playing big, attacking the rim. Kent State out to the lead. Should be a good one, Kansas and Baylor. Baylor's won 23 straight games. Kansas has won 11 straight. And Rob, how about the San Diego State and Dayton, a couple of mid-majors vying for perhaps number one seeds in the upcoming NCAA tournament. Yeah, Joe Lenardi has San Diego State solidly as a number one seed, and Dayton as a number two seed. You know it's a crazy year when Penn State's in the top ten, although it will be a short-lived visit as they lost earlier this week. And then when North Carolina's in last place of the ACC, you know something's weird. Yeah, 10 and 16, only three ACC wins. The team's lost six straight to place at Louisville tomorrow. Yeah, and remember, this is a team that was in the top five in the preseason polls. And certainly Cole Anthony has been injured and that's affected Roy Williams' team, but nobody saw this train wreck come. Illegal screen set by Buffalo. Kent State ball. Been a tough night for the Buffalo Bulls. Nine made baskets only on the night and eight turnovers as a team so far and down by nine. Beck, Williams, corner three. That's way off the mark. That's caught in the air by Williamson and a steal. And it's a three on one for the Buffalo Bulls hanging in the air, missing the gliding layup shot is Jordan. Offensive rebound, back out, Johnson three. And the loose ball taken by Williamson. One on one against Johnson. Alley up to Williams! A great unselfish play by Williamson to Williams. Kent State wasn't a turnover, but a long missed shot allowed for the easy run out. Jordan. Offensive foul on Jordan, his second of the game, and they go back the other way. Now about this alley-oop jam from Williamson to Williams up the floor. Oh, as we said, both teams like to get out in transition, and that's why. Both really comfortable converting rebounds and steals and easy buckets at the other end. Well, so much for the uh, field goal slump versus Eastern Michigan on Tuesday for this team. This team is getting up and down the floor and knocking down easy shots. Well, and you and I talked to Rob Senderoff and you said, how about that game? And he said, oh, we just forget about it. <laughs> Eastern Michigan, you don't get any of those shots because they play that zone defense. Rob Murphy, a longtime disciple under Jim Bayheim, and they play that 2-3 zone as well as anybody. Rob Senderoff said he hopes he doesn't see zone the rest of the year. Williamson over the left shoulder, no. Impala rips away the rebound for the Buffalo Bulls. The outlet to Galleon. Alley-oop Bob to Johnson, ho! Well, one good alley-oop deserves another. <laughs> yeah, I think so. And you can see, key for both these teams. Run good offense, don't turn it over, don't take bad shots, because if you do, the other team's running it right up your back. Inside, two minutes to go. 
in the first half, reach in foul on Ronaldo Segu. And that's his first. Here's the Buffalo Bulls alley -oop. A moment ago. Now this one had a little more distance to it. But a good job by Johnson again. You know, it's alley -oops, but is it alley -oops for the centers and the fours? It's not the bigs, <laughs> it's the guards and the wings. We've seen Johnson, Williams on the other side. So it's not just the big guys that are able to go get it above the rim. The guards have shown you their ability to run and go get it up top. Antonio Williams at the line. He averages 13 points per game this season. He has 14, Rob, in the first half alone tonight. Now make it 15. Well, and certainly somebody we said was going to have to step up with Pippen being unavailable. So far, it's been Williams who is shouldering the scoring load. Ten made baskets by Buffalo. Nine turnovers so far. Here's Johnson. Tough drive. Hangs and scores. Yeah, great job of making sure that he didn't just run into the contact, but able to take the basketball away from the defender. When you can adjust with the basketball in the air to be able to finish at the rim, that's when you convert at a high rate. Williamson, and they wave it off, traveling on Williamson with a turnover on Kent State. Coming up on the E-Trade Halftime Report, we'll catch you up on these stories. Joey Brackets previews Saturday's games. Dalen and Sean preview Kansas Baylor. Also, first half stats and highlights all coming up on the E-Trade Halftime Report. Galleon, high arcing three, rolls in. That's only his second made three of the season, his first points of the night. And Rob Baylor from Buffalo, despite the poor shooting and the turnovers, only down six. Yeah, well, the three-point shot has kept them in it. That's their fifth three of the first half, where Kent State has only hit one. Three consecutive shots made by the Buffalo Bulls, who were down nine in this game, now down six. Galleon, the friendly roll on the three, his first points of the game. And a nice pass from the paint by Johnson. Yeah, it starts by getting that deep into the paint. You collapse the defense. And as you said, Gallium was just one of five from three coming in. So he's not a guy that you're going to necessarily, you're going to give support and help off of him, not run him off the line. He made him pay, although it looked like the Harlem Globetrotters as it went around the rim there a couple of times. There's Rob Sinderhoff, head coach of Kent State. This team has had an up and down season in the, in the MAC. As you see the field goal numbers, Kent State won its first three MAC games, then lost three in a row, then won three straight. Now it's lost three of its last four coming into tonight. High rebound snag out of the air by Yimbala. And the outlet over to Segu. And the Bulls can chip away at the lead some more. Down six with 40 seconds to go in the first half of play. Now this would be big if they could close out this first half on the run. Sagu, tough step back, and they call traveling. Did that little James Harden step away. Traveling on Sagu, turnover on the Bulls. And a 2.8 second differential between the shot clock and the game clock. Harden never has that call. <laughs> no, he, never. Not in the NBA. No. <laughs> in fact, he does it more demonstratively and deliberately than any college player out yeah. there. He gets away with it. That was a. You don't see that very often on the step back off of the dribble called as a travel. Eight to shoot, 10 to go in the half. Williamson kicks it, corner, Simons, open three, Pong! His second three of the game, shot for Johnson at the buzzer, goes! He pakes it in at the horn! Start of the second half of play, Kent State leads Buffalo at the break, 39-33. to And welcome back everyone, Brock Bowling and Rob Kennedy with you. And Rob, this is first half song. Everything, threes, dunks, back and forth, physical play. Just fun to watch. Yeah, good pace on both sides. Certainly Kent State shot the ball well, and the three-point shot kept Buffalo in the ball game. 
Let's take a look at the first half highlights first for Kent State, the Antonio Williams show. He got a lot of easy points and easy baskets in the first half. Well, he's a strong, powerful guard, and he showed you why in the first half. You're right, he got some easy shots because he attacked. Attacked in the paint off the dribble, and then went and attacked the rim. As we said, it was six threes that kept Buffalo in the ball game in the first half. The senior guard, Devontae Jordan, got off to a quick start. He had eight of their first 10 points. He was quiet after that, but a couple of his teammates not known for making threes stepped up. And this could be a big basket. Remember this one at the buzzer when it looked like Kent State was going to locker room with a nine point lead and momentum. Johnson banks it in to keep the game at just six. There you see some of the first half numbers. Uh, Kent State shot 55% of the first half, 44% for the Bulls, but the Bulls shot 46% on threes. That shot blocked away and out of bounds off of Simons. And it stays with the Buffalo Bulls. The inbound to Mbala into Johnson's hands. And he finds Jordan. Bulls down six to begin the second half of play. Johnson, tough drive. Off the mark on that layup drive. Coach Whitesell wanted the foul, doesn't get it. And the rebound by Kent State. Here's Williams, very active in the first half. 15 points. That shot short. Fight for the rebound. They play on. Here's Mbala out ahead of the pack. And he got fouled by Roberts. And Mbala will head to the line for two. That is three now on Anthony Roberts. Ampala going to attack the rim, a hard foul to force him to earn it from the line where he's just 56% on the season. But how about the speed and quickness of the big guy to win that 50-50 ball? That was a loose ball and he was quicker to the ball than Kent State was. Ampala at the line. First free throw is short. And not surprising, Brock, he's in the top 10 in the league in block shots, fifth at a little over one per game, but he's also in the top 10 in the league in steals. And how many times do you see a center in the top 10 in a league in steals? Yeah, Mbala played a total of 53 minutes at Texas Tech last year. He was granted a waiver and a transfer to play immediately at Buffalo. So that's why he's playing this year. Played a part of that Texas Tech team in last year and the team that went to the Final Four in the National Championship game. Here's Beck driving inside and can't confirm but he's fouled. He'll head to the line for two. And sometimes, Brock, it just takes bigs a little longer to be able to start making an impact. Don't give up on bigs. You know, you see so many centers and power forwards that maybe don't have great stats as a freshman or even as a sophomore, but as the game starts to come to them, they develop a little bit of a post game, then all of a sudden they can flourish. And Mbala's had a terrific first year here for Buffalo, but his better days are still ahead of him as he continues to work on his offensive skills around the basket, especially his footwork in the post. Turvel Beck, the junior, nails both free throws. He's the guy starting for the injured Danny Pippen tonight. Danny Pippen out with back spasms, one of the starters and leading scorers for the Golden Flashes this year. Williams pivots, runs into Beck, and a foul on Beck. That's his second. There's Danny Pippen, averaging 13 points and seven rebounds per game this season. He had 20 points in the win at Buffalo on January 24th. Out of the lineup here tonight with back spasms. Jordan in the corner, Graves partially blocked three. Impala, offensive rebound. And the reset with Jordan. Hard to keep him off the offensive glass. Jordan hangs in the air, oh, tough shot! And he banks it in, falling away. Yeah, great defense by Simons, but the athletic ability to hang in the air by Jordan that was his first basket since five minutes into the ball game. Buffalo was down 11, now down just five. Two minutes almost gone by in the second half of play. Simons, the runner, doesn't go. And a loose ball foul. It's called on Kent State. 
It's on Turvelt neck. That's his third, so he has three, and Roberts has three as well in the foul category for Kent State. This is an easy one right here. Good challenge again by Mbala. Talk about a takedown. Bull Williams right out of the play and right out of the court area. And they're going to go to the monitor to check to see if there was uh, anything other than a common foul or if it's anything of the extracurricular variety. And this one's going to be close because he does grab him and pull him down and it wasn't a basketball play even though it didn't seem like it was excessive. Is he fighting for position? And I, I think that's nothing there. Yeah. You know, they've, got, they've got to go look for that hook and hold, but I don't think that rises to that level for a flagrant one. Especially that first angle that we saw where it looks like he, as he started to pull him down, let go like they just got tangled up. Well, one of the officials just come, came over to me and said they're actually reviewing a possible flagrant foul before that last play we just saw. They think they might have missed a flagrant foul before the foul called on uh, Beck. This is where they start going and searching and you know certainly you want the officials to have the ability to go to the monitor to get calls right but when it stops the flow of a game and this game has had a good flow to it good pace going up and down i like to see us put some kind of a clock on the ability to Another look, top of your screen. Beck and Williams get tangled, and here's the verdict. As we suspected, a flagrant one on Beck for the hit to the face there. So Buffalo will get the two foul shots and then have possession of the basketball. And as we said, that's the last thing you want to do if you're the Golden Flashes. You got good pace to the game. You got the crowd behind you. You got momentum. Mark this one down. This could be a momentum and game changer. And that flagrant that they called on Beck, that now gives him four personal fouls for the game. And remember, he's the guy who started in place of Pippen, but he really hasn't had much of an effect in a positive way on the game here tonight. Down to a three-point game. Buffalo was down 11 at one point in the first half, down six at the break. Now down by just one possession. Jordan draws the foul. And he'll head of the line to cut into the lead some more. That's on Antonio Williams. That's his first. 
Well, in the first half, Jordan was the guy that got their offense going, hitting a couple of threes. Scored eight of their first ten in the first half. After being shut out the rest of the first half, he's the guy that's getting going offensively to start it here in the second half. Jordan at the line for two. And the first one, nothing but net. Jordan, one of only five players in the nation, averaging five rebounds, five assists, and two steals per game this year. Uh, talk about a stat stuffer. And when he does that, when he is the guy that runs things for Jim Whitesell's team, when he's the consummate point guard, played his high school basketball for one of the best point guard coaches in the country, Kevin Boyle at Mount Verde Academy, who, oh, by the way, might have one of the best high school teams in the history of high school basketball this year. Count the basket and one. The basket goes for Anthony Roberts, his fourth point of the game. The foul is on Jonathan Williams, and that's his first. Yeah, Williams and Roberts both showing their strength to be able to finish through contact. Got hit, a little bit of a continuation, but he'll take it. So Roberts at the line, 75% free throw shooter, knocks it down. Kent State is 8 of 11 at the free throw line, and the lead is back up to four. Two and a half minutes gone by in the second half of play. They go back inside to Williams, fakes out Peterson, reverse layup, no, tapped up and in by Mbala. And he got pushed from behind. That's a great athletic play by the big guy to be able to get a hand on it. Impala with five points, down to a two-point lead again. And after keeping them off the offensive glass, pretty good in the first half. Kent State's gotten a couple of second-chance opportunities for Buffalo early. Roberts, blocking foul, called on Devontae Jordan for the Bulls, and that's his third. Well, you can keep Impala off the offensive glass for a while, but he's going to just keep coming. She gets a shove in the back from Williams, but it doesn't matter because he's athletic and quick off his feet, coming up with the tap. So two shots coming up for Anthony Roberts had nine points in the win at Buffalo in January. That's his sixth point of the game. There you see Josh Impala. Born in Detroit, grew up in France. Played sparingly at Texas Tech last year, now playing for Buffalo. Second shot for Roberts, the 6'4 sophomore from Detroit, Michigan, and down it goes. He has seven. Kent State making his free throws, 10 out of 13 on the night. But it's been a while since Kent State's been able to string together a couple of stops at the defensive end. Graves, step back three, got it. Yeah, that is hard to guard right there. Graves, their best three-point shooter on the season with 55 makes coming in with a tough one. Roberts answers with a two. And going right at Mbala, who challenged that shot. Back and forth we go. Buffalo trying to chip away at the lead some more, trying to eventually take the lead back in this game. Graves, another three. Puts it in. His third three of the game, and we are tied at 48. And back-to-back -back threes off the bounce. Roberts puts it in. I'll tell you what, good offense for both teams. But it's going to be whichever team can come up with some stops defensively. Johnson missing, rebound by Peterson for the Golden Flashes. Dressed in white. Roberts a three. Good! And maybe not the best decision. They had a five on four as Johnson was down at the other end of the floor, but might not have been the best decision, but it worked out just fine. The Another three by Roberts, his 14th point of the game, and a timeout taken by the Buffalo Bulls. Anthony Roberts, the pull-up three, giving the Golden Flashes the lead by five here in Kent. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by DiGiorno. It's not delivery, it's DiGiorno. Tomorrow night, this highly anticipated rematch is finally happening. Wilder Fury 2.
Their first fight was an epic split draw in December of 2018. Now, Deontay Wilder defends his WBC heavyweight title for a record 11th time against the lineal champ Tyson Fury, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific, from the MGM brand in Las Vegas, live on pay-per-view and ESPN Plus. To order the main card, go to ESPNPlus.com slash top rank and be sure to download the ESPN app if you're watching on your mobile device. Brock Bowling and Rob Peterson. Rob Kennedy, excuse me, with you. I know a Rob Peterson. So there I you go. <laughs> Brock Bowling and Rob Kennedy with you. There's a look at Anthony Roberts. First half, pretty much a non-factor. Second half, he's gotten hot. Yeah, first half, he was the distributor. He's the guy that got guys shots, especially in their run to get them that 11-point lead. But here in the second half, he's been the guy finishing himself. And a blocking foul. And the only problem is he called it inside the arc, but it wasn't on a shot attempt. Blocking foul on Roberts, that's his fourth. And that's a big call right there, especially because of what we just showed you with that graphic. Jordan, quick shoot three. Fight for the rebound, Jordan got it back. Inside Williams, reverse layup, no. Tapped up, missed by Mbana. And the rebound by Simons for Kent State. Yeah, Golden Flashes though, gonna have to clean things up on the defensive boards. That's five offensive rebounds here in the first five minutes of the second half after just giving up five offensive rebounds the entire first half. Simons, his three is good! Yeah, great dribble penetration by Williams. How many times do you get in? But Simons is a guy that you can't help off of. You gotta hug him out at the three-point line. That's his 12th point of the game, his fourth three. All of his points coming from beyond the arc. Jordan's three, answers for the Bulls! Now the three-point shot keeping him in it. Nine of 17 from deep from a Buffalo team that's second last in the MAC coming in. They shoot it at just 32% on the season. Much better here tonight from deep. A deep three by Williamson. Got it! Hey, what a shot from 30 feet away! Talk about offense. When these two teams put up 29 <laughs> combined points in the first four minutes, they haven't let up here since we've come out of the media timeout. Sagu wow. with the fadeaway J and it goes down. You know, and sometimes it's just lack of defense. I don't get that sense. Do you, Brock? I mean, <laughs> I think guys are guard. I think offensively guys have just stepped it up. This is not a game of X's and O's right now. It's uh, playground pride right now. Inside Williamson. Rolls in. Yeah, Whittington does such a good job of being a old school post player he's comfortable playing with his back to the basket they've got to get him some more touches inside and a foul who's it on looks like a blocking foul on kent state and it's on mitch peterson for kent state and that's his first well whittington coming off a solid season last year was a preseason all max selection because of that because of his ability to post up and squirt in the paint for rob senderoff as he drove down the baseline. And he now has two more points tonight. Well, that was a lack of defense as he turned the corner and there was no help side support. Williams, count the basket, and one! Went high off the glass and dropped in for two. Yeah, that may have gone off the top of the glass. I mean, felt the contact, and that's what you do. Smart play. Put it up and play. Even if you don't give the whistle, don't get the whistle, excuse me, you give your teammates an opportunity to go crash the offensive glass. Instead, you know, the chance to finish the three-point play. Brock, he has been aggressive offensively all night. He has turned the corner and attacked the 10. And he converts the three-point play. He has 18 points. Kent State. It was a tie game a moment ago, and now it's a nine-point bulge for the Golden Flashes. Jordan Graves, a deep three, book it. Well, dribble drive, dribble penetration, break the defense down. 
And Buffalo shooting it about as well as they have all season long from deep. And the lead for Kent State trimmed down to six. Williams needs help. Finds Williamson. He hit a three not too far from that same spot a couple of possessions ago. Shot clock at six. Peterson on the drive with three. And a steal by Jordan. One on one against Simons. Now two on one. Jordan shot blocked. Oh, they call a foul on Simons. And he doesn't like the call. He thought he got all ball. Now one of the few live ball turnovers that Kent State has had tonight. That gives the Bulls a chance to get out and run. Simons timed it up. He got ball, but then looked like he may have gotten a piece of the arm as well. Foul on Simons. Jordan in the line. Jordan has 15 points tonight. He's known more for his defense. Now 16 of the night. The last two seasons, he made the all-Mac defensive team. And expect them to be on that again this year. Once again, leads the league in steals and eighth in block shots. They've got two guys that are in the top ten in both those categories, and he as well as Mbala. Jordan makes both. And the Bulls cut it down to four. Approaching 12 minutes to go here in the second half of play. Kent State laid by six at the break. Led by as many as 11 in this game. Now it's a four-point edge for Kent State. Golden Flashes have made eight consecutive shots. Williams behind his head, looking for Williamson out of bounds. Turnover on the Golden Flashes. Yeah, good idea, just unable to deliver a good pass. Grant on the drive, draws the foul on the floor, no shot, foul on the floor. It's on Peterson, and that's his second. 11.49 to go in Kent, Ohio. It's Kent State by four, but the Buffalo Bulls coming back. Braves to the monster, right hand jam to keep the Bulls in it. Back in Kent, Ohio with 11.49 to go in the game. It's Kent State leading Buffalo 64-60. Brock Bowling and Rob Kennedy with you. It's been a back and forth game. Let's take a look at the Mac standings. The Mac standings, if you will, the top four receive a bye in the Mac tournament coming up in two weeks. Buffalo right now in the four spot. Kent State in the six spot. This is a big game for both of these teams here tonight. Yeah, you always want to be able to skip that first round game on, on campus sites, and you want to make sure that you get to Cleveland. That's where both Buffalo and Kent State have had success over the last five years. Buffalo with a historic run, four out of the five years. First time in MAC history that a team has won it four out of five, and the only team that kept them from making it five of five is Kent State. Yeah, both of these teams have had great success in the MAC in the MAC tournament for the last five years. Buffalo's won four of the last five. Again, Buffalo last year a school record, 32 wins, 32 and four, went 16 and two in the MAC. Kent State, by the way, back in 2002, won over 30 games, and that team was coached by Stan Heath, went all the way to the. Elite Eight lost to Indiana in 2002 as Grant rims out the first free throw. And we have an over the back foul called on Brock Bertrand for the Bulls, and that's his second. And that's a big story with Buffalo already in the bonus. First half, Kent State did a great job of defending without fouling. Only two free throw attempts in the first half. They've gotten to the foul line nine times already here in the second, and they're going to keep going there since they're in the bonus. Williams stopped on a double team. Williamson three, rims out. Fight for the loose ball. 
And we have a jump ball, and the arrow stays with Kent State. Buffalo's done a really good job, Rock, since they got down by nine, a locking in defensively. Kent State's not been able to run offense as well. One of the reasons why has been the foul trouble to Anthony Roberts. He's gone out of the game, and offensively, they've not been the same. Had to wipe some moisture off the floor. Then you look at Jim Whitesell. He says his team lately, the reason why it's won three straight and playing better, it's because of its defense. And his defense has had to claw its way back into the game. The defense turning into offense for the Bulls. And there's a blocking foul called. Looks like it's on Galleon for the Bulls. And that's his second. And if they can reestablish Whittington inside, that's going to free things up on the perimeter for their three-point shooter. Williams to inbound, finds Simons, quick shot, no. And we have an over the back foul, I think it's on Williams. It is on Antonio Williams for Kent State, and that's his second. And you want to be aggressive, but not a smart play when you're in the bonus. And a long way to go in this one, 11.15 to go, and Buffalo, as you said, Rob, in the bonus the rest of the way. And Buffalo, not a very good foul shooting team on the season, 11th in the MAC at just 66%, but over the last couple of weeks, they've shot it much better from the free throw line. Galleon, 6'4", freshman, knocks down the first free throw. He's from Washington, D.C. He played on only four minutes on Tuesday against Ball State, scored no points. He has five points right now, tying his season high. And the Bulls from Buffalo, dressed in blue, cut the lead to two, coming up on 11 minutes to go. A 7-0 run by the Buffalo Bulls. And this is a part of the game where you need a basket that they would generally go to Danny Pippen. Remember, they don't have him tonight. Out with the back spasm. Out of bounds off of Buffalo. Stays with Kent State. There's Danny Pippen averaging 13 points a game along with seven rebounds. As Rob said, out of the game tonight. That was... A game time decision by Rob Sindorov out with the back spasms. Yeah, he's been fighting through knee injury. Remember, he was out all last year with knee surgery. He's going to need knee surgery in the offseason, but it wasn't the knee that kept him out. He said he just bent over after going for treatment earlier today before shoot around, went to tie his shoe and his back locked up. Back to back missed shots for three by Ken State, but Williamson keeps it alive, saves it to Peterson. Falls down, and it's out of bounds off of Kent State. But Peterson, even though he hasn't scored a whole lot of points, he hasn't scored any, actually. Very active diving for loose balls here tonight. Yeah, came up with the ball, but that was a missed opportunity. If he delivers a good bounce pass, it's an easy score. Instead, turns it over. Kent State has missed its last five consecutive shots. And the Bulls can tie or take the lead on this trip. And a lot of that, Brock, is because Roberts, who is so effective not only in scoring here in the second half, but distributing in the first half. He's on the bench as well with four fouls. Graves missing, Whittington the rebound, and the outlet to Williamson. Kent State has gone ice cold here in the last couple of minutes from the field. Here's Williams, he finds Simons, open three. That's well short. And the rebound by Imbala, and the Bulls again can tire, take the lead. Inside, 10 minutes to go. Jordan inside, Impala, no, but he's fouled by Peterson, and Impala will go to the line for two. A great dribble penetration, putting pressure on the defense. You're forced to give support, and when you do, then nobody's there to guard Impala. See on this catch, this is where he's got to work on his footwork. He got away with the travel, they didn't call it. That's where you just got to get to the open spot and sit down. That's one of the things, remember, as you said, Brock just played 53 minutes last year at Texas Tech. So as he gets more game action and works on his footwork, he's going to be able to catch and finish on those attempts. Now Coach Whitesell says is a great rebounder, had 15 boards in his last game on Tuesday versus Ball State. That was the fourth time this year he's had at least 15 boards in a game. 
mean, you pull down 15 boards, you're doing some balling. Yeah, and he do, he gets memorable rebounds, right, above the rim. <laughs> yes. He, he doesn't get them to blow the rim. I mean, he carves out space. He's got a high upside potential. Whittington the floater. No. And the drought continues for Kent State, and Buffalo can take the lead on this trip down one. That is now seven consecutive misses from the field by Kent State. Jordan, short on that three, and the rebound by Williams, he wants to run. Trying to run the break, going down the lane, two-hand jam! I was just about to say, if they were in a half court, this is where Williams needs to attack. Didn't have a chance to say it because he beat the defense <laughs> up the floor and beat me to it. He beat everyone down the floor. It was a one on four and he still beat them. Now it's Johnson, his two goes in. Kent State with the ball and the lead by one. Roberts, Kansas. Uh, that's why they miss him, right? He's that other guy that can give you some offensive presence. And Rob Senderoff and his uh, staff taking a bit of a gamble, putting him in this quickly. If they can get some separation, Brock, look for them to take him out once again, maybe at the next TV timeout. Jordan finds Grant. Shot clock inside of 10. Jordan spinning and he turned it over. Turnover on Buffalo. Here comes Roberts down the lane. Dipsy do. No. Out of bounds to the Buffalo Bulls. Well, Williams is a guy who's been aggressive all game long for Kent State. We said he was the key guy and the X Factor coming in. Well, the little guard has been playing big getting down the lane and finishing with authority. He may be small, but he's big in stature. Kent State hanging on by three. Tomorrow at noon Eastern on ESPN, on the ESPN app, number one, Baylor hosts number three, Kansas, at the Farrell Center in Waco in a sonic blockbuster. This one could decide the Big 12 title and the number one overall seed in the NCAA tournament. Kansas Baylor tomorrow, Saturday noon Eastern on ESPN and the Watch ESPN app. And this one ought to be a good one. Devon Dodson was uh, injured for most of the first meeting in Lawrence back in January. There you see the guard comparison and some pretty good and similar numbers for the two. Yeah, it should be a terrific matchup. All the interesting stats going into that game. Baylor hasn't been behind by more than two points all season long at home in the Farrell Center. That, that, that's almost impossible. But when you do that, I guess you win 23 in a row. Yeah, the team's won 23 straight. It lost its second game of the season. It's only lost to Washington, who I don't believe is uh, on Joe Lenardi's uh, watch list for oh, no. the tournament so far. Their, their bubble has burst. <laughs> <laughs> It's gone. <laughs> yeah, they get to win the Pac-12 to have any chance at that. After a couple of great runs in the first couple of years. For Mike Hopkins out there doing a great job, but uh, not the season the Huskies thought they'd have. Loose ball, fought for, a tie up, and the possession arrow stays with the Bulls. It's a good competitive game tonight. Yeah, both teams are playing hard. That's what I was saying before. Despite all the offense, I, I think both teams have shown good energy on a defensive end. I think teams have just shot the ball well. And it might come down to the last five minutes of the game. We're almost in that time frame. Buffalo this year, 15 and one record when leading with under five minutes to go. Right now, the Bulls down three, and we have seven and a half minutes left. Graves, finger roll, lefts it up there, and it goes in. Well, striding and covering a lot of ground. Tucked the ball in and then able to finish at the rim. Graves with 16, and the lead is down to one for Kent State. And Roberts staying on the floor with those four fouls. 
Simons cross courts it. Roberts open three. Well short. Fight for the rebound. Still lose. Mbala has it. And is it a travel or oh, it's a travel? That is either a travel or a, a foul. They call it travel on Mbala. Oh, Whittington again looked like he was going to get an offensive rebound, but he just can't come up with it to start off with. Good play, and Whittington looks like he's going to have it. Instead of grabbing it, he tried to dribble it. There's Mbala coming up with the ball and going to the floor for the travel. Here's Williams on the drive. Contact, no call. Out of bounds. Touch last by Jonathan Williams of Buffalo. And it stays with Kent State. Williams attacking. Good job by Williams to come up and give help support. Williams. Too strong. Offensive rebound by Beck in the shot clock recess to 20. And he doesn't want to settle for those pull-ups. He's been at his best when he's been able to get all the way to the rim. Deep three by Robert Snow. That's trying to do too much. And the rebound by Impala. Impala rebounding on both ends of the floor. He has five offensive rebounds on this end tonight. Yeah, he's top five in the country, averaging over four offensive boards per game. Oh. And a reach-in foul called on Beck for Kent State. He is fouled out of the game. That is foul number five. He's the guy that started this game tonight for the injured Danny Pippen. At the line is Antoine Johnson, 79% free throw shooter. He's the guy who hit the bank shot free at the end of the first quarter first half buzzer to cut the lead from nine to six as we went into the halftime break how big will that be down the stretch he has tied the game at 68 and that is Buffalo's first lead of the game since it was 10 to 8 early on in the first half and so where does Kent State go without Pippen been a while since Simon's gotten a good look. Uh, the couple reach-in foul on Johnson, and that's his second. And I got to think, whenever Buffalo gets the ball back here, he's going to try and get physical drive downhill, because try and draw some contact, because it's been in the bonus for quite some time. And now both teams, so after a very quick first half that had tons of flow and not a lot of whistles, a lot more whistles here in the second half, both teams get to the foul line. Roberts with 17, and he ties the game at 69. And Kent State back on top by one. And I like this substitution. He gets Roberts out trying to protect with those four fouls. He's too important for this team. And here you see some of the max storylines, 40 of 74 conference games decided by six points or fewer this season. That's a blistering 54%. And certainly looks like this one's going to come down to a close finish as well. Buffalo back on top by one. Williams finds an opening, hangs in the air, score the basket and one! And a hit line for a free throw! I think that was a good no call on the contact. Williams again being aggressive. Getting into the paint via the bounce side, take it back. Could have been an offensive foul, but they didn't call that. And then with his defender on the floor, Williams steps it right back up and goes challenges the big guy in Bala. That's three fouls on Jordan. At the line, Williams for the three-point play. That's way off the mark of the rebound. Sky high four by Devontae Jordan. Yeah, that never had a chance. Graves, Johnson, three. And Williams goes up high for the rebound. Williams, only six feet tall, one of the smallest players on the floor in this game. Goes up high for the board.
Williamson might have been partially touched and grazed and blocked and it's controlled by Jordan up the floor Johnson does not have numbers in the corner Graves open three good and another missed offensive rebound on the other side for Whittington he got his hands on the ball he just can't come up with them instead it turned into a big three at the other end for Buffalo timeout Kent State 4.30 to go from Kent, Ohio at the Mack Center on the campus of Kent State University. Javon Graves with a big three. Buffalo up the road leads by two. Back in Kent, Ohio, Brock Bowling, Rob Kennedy with you for 30 to go in the game. The Buffalo Bulls on the road, lead it by two, 74-72. And Rob, how about Javon Graves? He's killing it tonight. Especially in the second half, their leading score. They kept him in check in the first half. He had just three. Well, he's got 18 here in the second half, getting himself into the paint, finishing. But it's been his three-point shooting as well. Four of five from deep here in the second half. And Buffalo out to the two-point lead, Brock, because they have gotten it done from beyond the three-point line. 11 of 22 from deep here tonight. And you mentioned the night and day performance first half compared to the second half for Javon Graves. Only three points in the first half, 18 in the second. His field goal numbers skyrocketing high here in half number two, especially from three-point range. And like you said, 11 of 22 shooting from beyond the arc for the Buffalo Bulls. Yeah, compared to just 5 of 17 for Kent State from deep. So that's been the story and difference so far. Yeah, we don't know exactly what they're talking about at the scorer's table just yet among the officials. As we mentioned, Kent State won at Buffalo in January by four. That was a down-to-the-wire game. And now the road team, Buffalo Bulls, trying to return the favor here in Kent, Ohio, in a place where Kent State is tough to beat, 11-2 on this floor this season. Meanwhile, even though Buffalo is shooting well, Kent State not so much here down the stretch. Golden flashes have missed 12 of their last 15 shots from the floor. And here's a look at the home record this season for the Golden Flashes, 11 and two, averaging over 80 points a game, allowing under 70. And right now the Golden Flashes have 72 points in the night and they have allowed more than 65 and we still have 4.30 to go. Yes, yeah, similar script to the first game. That Kent State, as you said, won up at Buffalo. They get off to a seven point lead at the half. Buffalo came back, tied it up, took the lead late. That game was tied with 45 seconds left before Kent State was able to march to the foul line, hit six to six late to get the win. Get the sense that that could be the same thing happening here tonight. Whichever team's gonna be able to convert, especially from the line since they're both in the bonus in the last couple of minutes. There's Danny Pippen wishing he could play tonight, I'm sure, is what he's feeling. One of the leading scorers on the team, averaging 13 points a game, out for tonight. Game time decision due to back spasms. But Kent State has played well without him, now trying to take the lead on this trip, or maybe tie it, and Williams can't convert on the shot. And the rebound by Graves for Buffalo. The Buffalo Bulls have outscored the Golden Flashes 19 to eight over the last nine minutes. And you miss Danny Pippen all game long, but you really miss him coming down the stretch because he's your best offensive player and you try to play through him. Johnson, Williams, good touch pass to Imbala. Shot clock at five. Jordan with three. Inside Imbala, no! Got his own rebound though. Puts it up, can't convert, misses two shots inside of the rebound by Kent State. Williamson, Euro step, lays it in. A true arms all over the place. Two guys challenging on it, right through contact to be able to tie it back up. Tied at 74, three and a half minutes to go here at the Max Center in Kent, Ohio. So you get a wide open miss at one end and then a tough finish at the rim at the other. Graves kicks it out to Jordan, bobbles it. 
into Johnson's hands, goes up, tries to throw down a jam, came up way short. And the rebound by Williams in rhythm. Here comes Roberts. Approaching three minutes to go. Shot clock inside of 10. Here's Williams around a screen, goes inside. Tough shot. Count the basket and one. Antonio Williams now with 24 points on the night. That's a new career high. And at the timeout, taken on the floor. 2.51 to go here in Kent. And Williams just attacking all night long through contact. Tough finish to get Kent State back out in the lead. Antonio Williams has been the guy who has certainly stepped up. We said, where would they turn with Pippen on the bench? Well, no question, Rob Senderoff putting the ball in Williams' hands, coming off that high ball screen last time out and being able to finish through contact. His 24 points have kept Kent State out in the lead here. After falling behind his career high, couldn't have come at a better time. Yeah, he's really put this team on his back here tonight and having to kind of pick up the slack for the injured Danny Pippen out tonight with back spasms, one of the leading scorers on this team. But Williams also averaging the same amount of points per game as Pippen at 13 points per game as 24 right now, a new career high and make a 25. And he's done it without making a three and he's a good three point shooter on the season at 41%, but it's been driving the basketball, not settling for jump shots and putting pressure on the dig. Jordan for the tie. Offensive rebound in Baller. And the shot clock reset to 20. He is beating Whittington like a drum off the glass. Graves again for three. Well, you can't give him two opportunities each trip. And it's the sophomore in Baller who is just absolutely owning the glass. Tied at 77. Williams falls down and turns it over. And the Bulls come out of the pack with it and a reach-in foul called on Williamson. And that's his second. The three-point shot tonight, Rob, has kept Buffalo back in this game. And a big play tonight, all night by Graves. And just running right into a three. His second three attempt on that possession because of another offensive reason, rebound by Mbala. So Javon Graves will go to the line. He was voted preseason all Mac East before the season started. He has 24 points, 66% free throw shooter, and the first one goes in. And a very good chance to end up on a postseason all Mac team. Sixth in the league at scoring at over 16 a game. And he has had a big second half here for the Bulls. He goes two for two. He has 26. And the Bulls on the road lead by two with exactly two minutes now to go in the game. Williams lost it. Loose ball picked up by Mbala. Turnover on Kent State. Mbala reaching foul called on Williams. And that's his third. Well, back to back costly turnovers by Williams. Last two possessions allowing Buffalo to get themselves back to the foul line. Can't turn the basketball over. Got to take care of it down the stretch. Impala at the line for two. And it's good. Sports Center from LA tonight after Pelicans Blazers with Lithicone and Neil Everett will have full postgame coverage from Zion's first game post All Star break. Plus, George Sedano looks back at Dwayne Wade's impact in Miami with his jersey retirement set for Saturday night. And on the eve of Fury Wilder reactions from the weigh in, as well as the final prep from Las Vegas. Sports Center from LA, 1 a.m. Eastern, 10 Pacific on ESPN and the ESPN app.
One for two for Mbala. Just about his season average from the line. Big offensive possession. Can't turn the basketball over, and they need a good look. Golden flashes down three. 90 seconds to go. Whittington puts it in. Oh, they needed that. Again, where are you going to go? Oh, and a violation. Talk about a costly mistake and turnover. Mental lapse by Jonathan Williams on the turnover. Yeah, he inbounded the basketball improperly, crossed over the line, and a turnover on Buffalo, and Kent State has possession underneath its own goal. 30-second timeout taken by Rob Sidorov, and the Kent State Golden Flashes. Here's that turnover. You see nice one-on-one -on -one isolation back to the basket by Wigginton and then Williams. What's he doing? And good job as well by Antonio Williams for selling it with the official. Uh, he <laughs> stepped in there. Not only is he trying to get in and disrupt, get in front of Jordan, not allow the basketball in, but he's refereeing as well. He's done everything tonight for Kent State. Career highs. He's officiating. Yeah, he's officiating a pass. <laughs> the only problem was those two late key turnovers that he had coming down the stretch. So now an opportunity to try to wipe those away with a couple of good plays coming down the stretch. There's Jim Whitesell coaching his team. Antonio Williams leading his team. Back and forth battle up and down the floor we go. Both teams trading punches up and down the floor. Roberts inside. Whittington. No. Rebound Jordan. No need to foul. You just got to get back. A couple of missed opportunities for Kent State at the rim. Graves will have the ball in his hands, try to make it off the high ball screen. Jordan fakes the three, drives inside. Shot clock inside of 10, here's Graves, he's got the hot hand. Inside pass, the jam by Williams! Well, that's the way to share the basketball. Great interior passing for the easy dunk at the rim. Bulls by three, another timeout taken by Rob Sinderhoff and the Kent State Golden Flashes, 42.2 to go. And the hometown team, the Kent State Golden Flashes, down by three. Well, when they share the basketball, Buffalo's good. They shared the basketball on this possession. Nice ball fake drive. Nice extra pass. How about the big guy with the touch pass and a huge assist for the finish by Williams? So no timeouts left now for Kent State. Here's a look at the current MAC standings and the seeds if the tournament were to begin today. The top four seeds reserve, uh, receive a bye into the MAC tournament in a couple of weeks. Buffalo right now sitting on that four line. Kent State in sixth place and you get the first round bye. That's less work to do to claim the championship in a one big lead or one bid league to go to the big dance. So coming out of this timeout, where Kent State's going to go, obviously try to get Williams and maybe some kind of ball screen action or Roberts. And then don't forget about Simons. He's their best three-point shooter. You're down three. You don't need a three. You need a basket. And if you can go early enough, then you don't have to give the foul up right away. This is where NBA teams are so good at playing two for one. Right, if you get a quick score here, especially off the set on the sideline out of bounds, then you can just go try and get a defensive stop and not have to give up the foul. But if it takes you 15 seconds to score, then you're forced to give up the foul right away at the other end. Kent State out of timeouts. Buffalo has three remaining. Kent State ball in the front court, down three. We find Whittington. They were trying to get Simon on a Dribble handoff for a good look outside. Williams nearly lost it. Step back three. No, it's over everything. Caught by Williams. Roberts three. Good! How many times on a broken play do you see somebody get an open look? 
It looks like Buffalo's not going to call a timeout. They're going to try to play for the lead. It's going to be Graves in a high ball screen. Tied to 82. Inside 10 seconds to go. Here it comes. Graves with five. Graves slips with three. He finds Jordan. Three for the win. No! We're through to overtime at the Max Center in Kent, Ohio. Well, they didn't call the timeout. They wanted to go with the high ball screen with the ball in Graves' hands. But they did not get a good look. Tied at 82. Ready for five more minutes? Absolutely. <laughs> Here's the three again by Roberts to tie the game at 82 and save of the day momentarily for Kent State. A couple of big plays, the offensive rebound right here by Whittington to keep it alive. Not only come up with the offensive rebound, but smartly look out to three and find the wide open Anthony Roberts. And then the missed three by Buffalo, you're right, not exactly the best look. Came up well short on the shot by Jordan, and we're going to play Five more minutes of basketball here at the Max Center. Yeah, it was a deep three going off the bounce to your left. Not a high percentage shot. That's where you want to drive it. Put pressure on the defense. Remember, you're in the bonus. Go attack the rim. Don't settle for deep threes, especially off the bounce. There's Jim Whitesell, the head coach in his first season at Buffalo. He spent the previous four seasons as the associate head coach for the Bulls program under former coach Nate Oates. Nate Oates went to Alabama to take over the Crimson Tide job. And uh, Jim Whitesell, no stranger to the Mac, no stranger to the Buffalo Bulls program. He's in his first season, and he feels like his team has played some of its best basketball of late, winning three straight, getting it done on the defensive end. This team has had an up and down max season. The Bulls started out four and two in that play, then lost three of four. Now it's one three in a row, trying for win number four in a row here tonight. As you take a look at the game summary, seven ties, 12 lead changes. Graves has 26, 23 since the break. 12 made threes by Buffalo. That's what's kept the Bulls in it and has tied the game up at 82. Not only 12 makes, but 12 out of 25, shooting it at a much better clip than they do on the season. We said coming in, they're second to last in the MAC at just 32%. They've shot it at over 48% here tonight. Ibala against Whittington. They will jump in the center circle. Overtime tap, and here we go. Five more minutes at the Max Center in Kent, Ohio. Brock Bowling, Rob Kennedy, and the rest of our ESPN crew. Who will strike first in the overtime session? Roberts, the hero a moment ago, tied the game up on a three into Williams' hands. Inside Whittington, two-hand jam! And that's the way to go finish strong. Going right at him, Ball. Whittington now in double figures with 10 as Kent State strikes first in the overtime session. Here's Williams, left-handed scores. Yeah, the lefty, and he's got such long arms. You see the extension as he was able to finish over top of Peterson. Ties it at 84. Simons. Oh, and a deflection off the hands of Jordan. Nearly had a breakaway basket attempt. Instead, it's out of bounds. It'll stay with Kent State. Remember, he leads the back at over two steals per game. That would have been a big one because it would have been a live ball, uncontested layup at the other end. Williams finds a crease of first down a jam. Like broke ankles, and then he nearly broke the rim. 27 points for Williams adding to his career high, and it's Kent State on top by two. They've not been able to keep him out of the lane. And Bella finishes. Well, that is textbook pick and roll. You're not gonna get pick and pop out of Mbala. He's going right to the rim. 30-second timeout taken by Jim Whitesell and the Buffalo Bulls. Here's the previous jam by Kent State from Antonio Williams. Now Williams just doing what he's done all game long. He's had his way. He's beaten. 
anybody who's guarded him off those high ball screens into the lane and then attacking the rim. He set his career high 27 without a made three point shot. It's been attack, attack, attack. Well, Kent State head coach Rob Sinderoff said before the game today that Antonio Williams, extremely important and valuable for this team. He made no bones about it. This team goes as he goes. If he's playing well, the team is playing well. He's stayed out of foul trouble for the most part, has three so far. They say when he gets in foul trouble, he has to take him out of the game, and the team gets out of sorts when he's not in there. And remember, they've needed all of those points because their leading scorer and rebounder on the season, Danny Pippen, out with back spasms, unavailable tonight. But Williams has done a great job right from the get-go. Early on, he established his ability to get into the paint pretty much at will off the bounce and off those high ball screens. Tie game at 86, 3.20 to go here in the OT. Near steal, deflection off of Impala, and it stays with Kent State. And the big guy looking like a guard defending out on the perimeter. Most big guys just hang back in the lane. <laughs> He's a good enough athlete and quick enough to go guard on the perimeter. Williams doubled, and he lost it, but he was fouled first. And I think it's on Jordan. Nope. Instead, it's on Johnson for Buffalo. That's his fourth. So Antonio Williams, the six-foot senior from Chicago, career high, 27 points tonight, 64% free throw shooter. She'll, will try to give Kent State the lead, and he does. Antonio Williams tonight, he has drawn five fouls by himself on Buffalo defenders. Yeah, not surprising because he just keeps getting into the lane and attacking the rim. One of two for Williams and the rebound by Buffalo. Buffalo will try to take the lead on this trip as we have three minutes to go here in the overtime session. Jordan on the drive, left-handed, curls off the rim, and the rebound by Williamson, he wants to run. Three on two, now Buffalo does a good job getting back on D. Yeah, great transition D. Roberts, left hand, and lays it in. Oh, the up and under, and just able to extend it long enough and get the ball high enough on the backboard. Kent State by three. Johnson for the tie, got it! Wow. He ran into that three-point shot like he was a 47% shooter from deep. Just 27 on the season, 27%. But Buffalo shooting lights out from three. That's his second three on the night. He has 17 in the game, tied at 89, coming up on two minutes to go in the OT session. Roberts again. Rebound Jordan. Well, the spike coming in, not really having to worry about chasing Buffalo off the three-point line. You got to make an adjustment because they are just absolutely lights out from deep tonight. Jordan inside Mbala puts it in. Oh, and you got to make him earn it. That late in the ball game, he's a 56% foul shooter. You got to go up and hammer him. Hack a shack on the big guy there. 11 points for Mbala. 90 seconds to go in OT. Buffalo by two. Williams for the tie. Got it. That time he rejected the high ball screen as the defender tried to cheat and get over top. Took it to his strong hand on the right side and then finishes through it. Over 30 now. 30 points for Williams. Adding to his career high tonight. One minute to go in the overtime session. Tied at 91. This is where they want the ball. They want it in Graves' hands to make the play. Graves a deep three. Tapped in by Mbala. He's smiling because he accidentally just kind of tapped it and hoped it would go in. It did. He has eight offensive rebounds in the game. And the most important two points of the night for him so far, 93-91, Buffalo with the lead. 
And a timeout taken by the Bulls. Well, he's so quick. He's got a great nose for the basketball as well. See, Wigginton just didn't hold on to that block out long enough. Whittington's got to get back and put a body in him. That is a lazy touch. You're in overtime. He's played a lot of minutes. But on that key of a play, you got to get contact, especially knowing that Embala is one of the top five offensive rebounders statistically in the country. In the overtime session, Josh Embala has six points. He's three for three from the field. He has 13 points for the game, 11 since the halftime break. And now five double-doubles in his last seven games. After playing just 53 minutes last year, he's really starting to get into the flow. A big factor on the floor and a big factor why Buffalo has been playing better. There you see the storyline. 40 of the 74 conference games decided by six points or fewer this season. This one going down to the wire again. We're playing an extra five minutes. We're down to 39 seconds to go. Kent State is down two. Simons ties the game at 93. Now oh, smartly jump stop under control and able to finish despite the challenge defensively by Mbala. And about a two and a half second differential between the shot clock and the game clock here in the overtime session. Tie game at 93. Timeout, Jim Whitesell and the Buffalo Bulls. All right, so tie game. 2.3 second differential between the shot clock and the game clock, 16 to shoot. And what do you look for here from the Buffalo Bulls? Well, what's worked best for them is when they've gotten Graves or Jordan going downhill, whether it's off a high ball screen with Mbala pulling out, or whether it's a clear out. But getting into the lane and breaking the defense down is where they've been at their best. The Buffalo Bulls. A program which has done very well over the years. Before Jim Whitesell took over this past offseason, they had a great run for four years with Nate Oates. Prior to Nate Oates coaching the team, it was run by Bobby Hurley, and he took this program to the NCAA tournament before Hurley left for Arizona State. And really put this program on the map. Yeah. And having a terrific run out in the Pac-12. Had a big win last night at home against Oregon. And so let's see where Buffalo now puts the basketball. Tie game at 93, 18.3 to go here in the overtime session. If you're wondering, the Bulls have the alternate possession arrow. Should there be a tie up? Down to 10 seconds to shoot. Jordan Johnson. Great D to stay down on the ball fake. Graves, one to shoot, Williams for three, air ball, and a shot clock violation. It goes back to Kent State with 1.8 to go. They're going to put about five tenths of a second back on the clock. Good call, yep. Shot clock violation, so though. There was a 2.3 second differential between the two clocks. It's a shot clock violation. They should put 2.3 on there, shouldn't they? The official's going to talk it over right now. A 30-second timeout taken. So Rob Senderoff taking the 30-second timeout to set a play up. Remember, in your head with the clock, with three seconds left, that's enough to be able to get two or three dribbles going up the floor. There's too many times you see guys throw the ball up with a second and a half, two seconds left. You got time to be patient, put it to the deck, and try and get a better look. Rob Sinderoff, in his ninth season, absolutely loves it here at Kent State, former associate coach at Kent State on two different occasions before taking over the head coaching job nine years ago in 2011, the winningest coach in program history. And ideally, you'd like to get a guy peeling off so that he catches it on the run, heading up to the floor. If you have to double back to the basketball, that doesn't allow you to cover as much ground. 3.2 seconds to go, and another timeout taken by Jim Whitesell and Buffalo trying to get a look at the 
offensive set by the Kent State Golden Flashes. Now it's extended to a full timeout. 3.2 to go in overtime, and we're tied at 93. As the Buffalo Bulls lost at home to Kent State in January, and now trying to return the favor here in Kent, Ohio, against the Kent State Golden Flashes. Brock Bolding, Rob Kennedy with you. It's been a good game. Yeah, they, both teams have played hard. Both teams have played well. You've had a couple of guys with monster games led by Antonio Williams, career high over 30. It's been an entertaining game that it looks like we may have some more left unless Kent State can find a shot here with 3.2 left. And Kent State playing very well without the services of leading scorer Danny Pippen out with the back spasms. And Antonio Williams has really carried this team. Yeah, and remember, depth's going to be a problem if you get to a second overtime. Kent State's got a couple of guys with foul trouble. They've had a lot of guys play a lot of minutes because they've got the much shorter bench than Buffalo has. No timeouts remaining for either team. Then you see the game trends. 12 ties, 14 lead changes. Javon Graves, almost a non-factor in the first half. He's been the hero in the second half for Buffalo. Mbala's been active for the Bulls. And for Kent State, Antonio Williams has been outstanding. And Whittington's going to be up in a screening position here up front. Interesting, Williams is the guy who's taking it out. Let's see if they get it back to him on a full run. Here we go. Antonio Williams, full head of steam, half court shot, and it's partially blocked. And we go to double overtime here at the Max Center. One overtime, not enough. Number two coming up, tied at 93 in Kent, Ohio. Uh, here's how we got here. Little dramatics at the end of regulation. This three right there as Roberts was able to step into it. You think the crowd liked it? Absolutely. Then that had Buffalo with an opportunity to win it at the end of regulation, but Jordan with a misfire and Bala towards the end of the first overtime with the tip in to give him the two point lead. But then it was Simon that had the answer to get it tied up. And that's where we still stand. High scoring, fun game with a lot of pace, a lot of energy. Crowd's been into it. 93 all. Not a bad day for a Friday night. <laughs> Little Friday night hoops and 10 extra free minutes of basketball for the fans in attendance tonight. There you see the last time these two teams played in double overtime. Nine years ago for the Bulls and 11 years ago for Kent State. And the Second overtime tap underway into the hands of Williams. He finds Whittington. Remember, guys, they got to be tired. Here's where you really got to dig down. Oh, and Peterson throws it away as he thought Williams was going to zig. Instead, Williams zagged in a turnover on the flashes. And credit Buffalo for getting up defensively and not allowing Kent State to get into offense. Jordan, Williams, Imbala, Graves, and Johnson. The five on the floor in Buffalo, uh, for Buffalo, dressed out in blue. Graves, tough fadeaway shot, goes! So after being held scoreless in the last overtime, he gets the first bucket here the second overtime. 28 points for Graves, 25 since the halftime intermission. Can Kent State respond? Williams on the drive, lays it in. Well, that's the guy who's been responding all game long. Same thing, high ball screen action and he's just getting to the rim. Williams, well short, an air ball. It's caught in the air by Roberts. Robert's been playing with those four fouls for a long time. Shot clock inside of 10. Roberts along two. Fight for the board. Whittington 
Williamson in the corner, open three, Simons, no. And that's their best three-point shooter. You see tired legs for both teams, but that was a good open look. May have been able to take some more time to line that one up. Graves, tough shot, missed it. Saved by Williams into the hands of Mbala. Mbala, strong move, and they wave it off. Offensive foul on Mbala. Jim Whiteside can't believe it. That's foul number four on Josh Mbala. And talk about the activity for Mbala. He kept that first ball alive. He was like Inspector Gadget getting his <laughs> hand on it. And then the great hustle save right there by Williams. Big guy goes, gets it. Oh, I'll tell you what, I think that's a good call. I was with Jim Whitesell. He was right here in front of us. I thought maybe it was a block, but that was great defense. How about, talk about toughness and mental toughness to be able to move your feet to get in that possession defensively this late in the ball game. Williams had it poked away into Williamson's hands. Shot clock under 10. Attrition right now. Both teams tired. Oh, what a shot by Williams falling away and drops it in. And I'm not so sure he wasn't just throwing it up for Whittington. Kent State by two. Approaching, approaching two minutes to go in OT. Graves for the lead and he got it. Wow. Another step back three by Graves. 30, 31 points for Graves, 28 after the halftime break. It's Williams on one end and Graves on the other. And the Bulls back on top by one. One guy from three and the other guy on dribble drive. Williamson for the lead, no. Fight for the rebound, it's out of bounds to the Buffalo Bulls with a minute 41 to go. How about this acrobatic, awkward looking shot that drops in for two for Antonio Williams? Well, some nights it's your night. This is Williams' night. Both guys with 30 or more doing it in a different ways. Williams on dribble drives, Graves from three. Johnson in the corner, Jordan, the pump fake, wide open for three! Oh my, they go over the century mark on another made three. Timeout taken by Rob Sidoroff and Kent State. Oh, Jordan knocking down a pressure three to put Buffalo up by four, 101-97, a minute 11 to go in double OT. So you come in, you go through all your scouting reports, you say the biggest thing about Buffalo is you can't let them get out in transition. They can't beat you up on the offensive glass. About the seventh thing you get to is three-point shooting, right? Because coming in on the season, they shoot it at just 32%. Not tonight. It's been three-pointer after three-pointer. Graves on a step back, and then Jordan on a ball fake. See you later. And another step back. 15 for 31 from beyond the three-point line. Those 15 made threes, one short of their season high. All right, so Kent State with the ball down four. Minute 11 to go in the second overtime session. How did the Golden Flashes attack here? Well, they got to attack quickly, and they've got to attack the rim because that's where they've been at their best. Whether it's Williams or Roberts, certainly Williams has been the answer all night. Penn State needs a basket here. Can Williams give it to them? Instead, out to Roberts. Roberts had a strip into Whittington's hands and he lost it. Turnover on the flashes. Up the floor, ball loose and picked up by the flashes. And a loose ball foul called on Graves. And that'll have Kent State go down to the line to shoot free throws with the clock stopped. 53.6 to go. And that is a huge missed opportunity for Buffalo. You're up by four. If you've got an open layup, fine but that wasn't an open layup. You're better off pulling the basketball out. You're in the double bonus. Jim White still beside himself. <laughs> Can't turn it over in that situation. And then give up the foul to allow Kent State to try and cut it to a two-point game with the clock stopped. 
That could not have gone worse for the Bulls. And you're sending C.J. Williamson to the line, an 89% free throw shooter. He has 11 yeah. points so far tonight. He can cut the lead in half on this trip to the line. Two shots coming up for C.J. Williamson, the senior from Orlando. Oh, another rare miss. He missed one earlier in the game in the first half. He's missed two so far here tonight. There's yeah. Danny Pippen, who has not played tonight due to the injury, the back spasms just before game time. He missed two all season from the foul line with 16 of 18 coming in. He's missed two tonight. He can cut it to a one possession game with this free throw. And he got it. Buffalo on the road, leading by three. Down to 45 seconds remaining in the double overtime session. Kent State needs a stop. Graves floats it up. No. High rebound taken by Williams, but it's out of bounds. Oh, they say off of Kent State. And I think they're going to go to the monitor and review. As you said, Kent State needed to come up with a stop, but they needed a stop and a defense, a rebound. They couldn't come up with the defense, a rebound portion of it. And I think that's going to get overturned. Yeah, I think so too. And that's where it's a great ability to be able to go to the monitor. And that one, I think, uh, should be a quick overturn. Yeah, it looks like it's off the fingertips. Last by Williams. It's poked away by a Golden State area. Yeah, I don't Kent think State he, player. I don't think he actually got a hand on the basketball. I think it got knocked off by Williams' other hand. I don't even think the Kent State defender got in there. That other view was a lot more conclusive and easy. Take a look again. And, and again, I'm, you know, whoop, whoop, slow it down right here. But it's Williams' hand on the ball. Williams' hand still on the ball. And you see right there, Antonio Williams' his hand comes back. I'm not so sure why it's taken so long. Like, we looked at it, what did we say? That's easy, that's being overturned. That was 30 seconds ago. I'm not a referee. Now we need the third guy to clean. We gotta fix this, come on. <laughs> So they're going to go look again. You, I mean, Brock, do you want to go over and see? I mean, it, <laughs> there are some that it takes four guys or whatever. That one was pretty easy. I mean, it has to be indisputable video evidence to overturn the call of the floor. The call of the floor was off of Kent State. Looks pretty obvious to you and I. As you and me. And everybody's the... sitting at home, too. <laughs> Official <laughs> review. I got it. Come on now. Thank God we don't have a night flight. We'd miss it. And they changed the call. Yeah, of course <laughs> they did. Just two minutes after everybody else knew. <laughs> all right. Just needed something hey, to wake everybody up, right? It's just adding to the drama, that's all. It's adding <laughs> hey, to the drama. Both teams like the fact they went there because I'll tell you what, guys are gassed. Guys playing a ton of minutes. A ton of guys with over 40 minutes logged here tonight. And you don't necessarily need a three right here, but if it's a good look, take it. Yeah, you take whatever the defense can give you, but you're right, you don't have to give up the three. You gotta get the best look as quickly as possible. So here comes Williams and Kent State down three, 30 seconds to go. And oh, Simon stepped out of bounds and a turnover on Kent State. He wanted to go to the corner and shoot a game time three. Instead, he stepped out of bounds and the ball goes back over to Buffalo. Well, that's a set play. Is that left foot out? The right foot's in. Looks like the left foot is touching that blue sideline. That is out of bounds. I didn't get a great look there, but the official was right on top of it. Now Kent stayed up in the full court pressure. Don't have to give up the foul right away. 
want to try to come up with the steal, and then if you can't, we're a turnover. And they foul Graves with 25.4 to go. Your percentages and possibility of pulling it out go up so much more if you come on up with the turnover. Keep the ball in the backcourt, try to force him into a trap, comes out, then give up the foul immediately. Instead, you got Graves, who shoots it at 67% on the season at the line for two. And the shot goes in for Graves. Makes it a two possession game with 25.4 to go. And Graves with now 29 points of the night. That is a new career high. And now 33. Now 33, excuse me. But 30 of those in the second half and the second overtime. Remember, he was scoreless in the first overtime. Buffalo on an 8-1 run. Shot for three, misses by Williams. Rebound by Buffalo. Foul on Kent State, 16.5 to go. And Buffalo can make it a three possession game with free throws right here. Now Buffalo showing you some toughness and grittiness on the road. They had the lead late in the ball, get trailed all ball game until late into the second half pretty much and had the lead in White Cell's team had the lead an opportunity to put the game away didn't do that got themselves into the first overtime had to survive a desperation heave at the end of the first overtime and now gutting it out late Six-point game, 15 seconds to go in the double overtime session. Simons, short, rebound by Jordan. And that is it, the Buffalo Bulls in double overtime, winning by six. That's gonna wrap things up here for us for Rob Kennedy. I'm Brock Bowling, the final score again. 104-98, Buffalo wins it in double OT. Coming up next on ESPN2, VCU in St. Louis. Let's send it out to Mike Corey and Mark Plansky. Good night from Kent.